elite see this as a war on those that it considers weak, stupid, undesirable or unfit to survive. If you succumb to their poisons, then you are weak. If you can't work out what is happening to you, then you are stupid. If your skin is the wrong colour, then you are undesirable. And if you are not part of their gang, you are unfit. In this day and age, survival is the best form of resistance. And your best chance of survival is to turn away from the medical system that genocidal criminals have provided you with and take back responsibility for your own health. And now let's turn our attention to distilled water. Distilled water is quite a controversial subject, as there are many people out there who will warn you that it is dangerous to drink. The word distilled sounds very clinical and daunting, but another word for distilled is pure, pure water. So the idea that you shouldn't really be drinking pure water now sounds quite ridiculous. Distilling is not filtering. This chart shows the difference between distilling, filtering and other forms of water treatment. You can see that distilling removes absolutely everything. The next best thing is reverse osmosis filtering. But boiling only removes bacteria and viruses. The problem with filters is that eventually they become breeding grounds for bacteria as they tend to be warm, wet, dark places. Use a filter for a few months and cut it open and you'll find it's pretty slimy in there. In a distiller, water is turned into steam and then condensed back into pure water. All the inorganic minerals, chemicals, cells from dead animals, bacteria, viruses, they remain at the bottom of the distiller. And out the other end you have pure water that contains zero parts per million dissolved solids. Nature only makes distilled water. Rain, snow, mist, fog and dew are all distilled by a similar but natural process. Now, doctors will tell you not to drink distilled water. They will tell you that it leaches minerals out of the body, leaving you with the impression that all the calcium will be sucked out of your bones and you're liable to snap like a twig in the lightest of breezes. But what they conveniently forget to tell you is that there are two types of minerals, organic and inorganic. You are made up of organic living minerals, but the minerals in tap water, bottled water, mineral water and spring water are inorganic minerals, essentially particles of rock and dirt that have been picked up along the way. This picture gives you an idea of the difference between organic and inorganic minerals. One is organic iron and the other is rust. Most supplements are the inorganic forms. Just try dropping a cornflake that's been fortified with iron in a bowl of water and then drag it around with a magnet to see what sort of iron it's been fortified with. The body cannot metabolize inorganic minerals so they are deposited in the organs and tissues. When it collects in and around the joints, it's called arthritis. In our eyes, it's cataracts and glaucoma. In our arteries, that's heart disease, strokes and arteriosclerosis. In our kidneys, kidney stones, in our gallbladder, gallstones and so on and so on. Distilled water dissolves and washes away inorganic minerals, but it doesn't touch the organic forms. We know this intuitively. We use water to wash our clothes. The inorganic minerals, rock and dirt, comes out of our clothes and stays in the water. But it doesn't touch organic matter like blood stains, sweat stains and grass stains. But if you were to put dirty water into your washing machine, then the water already contains a large amount of dissolved matter, so it's no longer able to dissolve anymore. And so your clothes end up dirtier than they were before they went in. Tap water, bottled water, spring water and mineral water are all bad for you for this reason alone. Even rainwater, which is obviously naturally distilled, is no longer as good for you as it once was. In the past, the sun would heat up the sea and evaporate water, which would form cloud high up in the atmosphere, where it would interact with the ozone. So not only was the rain clean and pure, but it would also contain a relatively high concentration of hydrogen peroxide which is actually very beneficial to the body. But these days, there's a lot of pollution in the air, 
so the water vapour tends to coalesce around particles of pollution, much lower in the atmosphere where there is no ozone. You could always wait for the first of the rain to clean the air before collecting it, but you're probably better off with a tabletop distiller like this one here. Nonetheless, there will be those who will insist that in order to make distilled water safe to drink, you will have to put the inorganic minerals like pink Himalayan sea salt back into it. I would suggest that anyone who tells you that pure water is dangerous unless you put a little dirt in it, is very cleverly speaking out of a small hole in their bottom. We contaminate our water enough as it is. We make it bitter, acid, sweet, and add flavour and chemicals and artificial colours in coffees, teas and soft drinks. But fundamentally, our perception of water has been manipulated. Now we're going to show you some water. This is tap water. And we're going to kind of like put this on a, on a trial tonight. And we're going to prove that this water is absolutely filthy and unable to do the job that water was intended to do. This is distilled water. We're going to prove that it's pure water. It's absolutely pure and it's the water we should put in our body. And uh, we'll be able to see the difference between these two waters real quick. One question I have here, does water conduct electricity? You know, if it's tap water, it's absolutely filthy, we know it does. If I touch these two wires together, that light goes on. That's an open circuit. If he's an electrician, he'd call it a, a normally open circuit. If I put it in distilled water, it does exactly what it's supposed to do, and that's nothing because those two wires aren't touching. That's an open circuit. It shouldn't light the light. But if I put it in tap water, it closes that gap. There's something in that water that's making that gap close. And the difference between these two waters is this is absolutely filthy water, this is pure water. Our water comes to a treatment plant where we're chemically treating our water. That's why it's called a treatment plant. Our water is exposed to many chemicals. This is a, a newspaper from, from Utah called Capital Connections, news for about people in state government. The Utah State Seal. On the back of it, it says, making sure your water's safe. It's written about Eva Domensky. She has a PhD in environmental engineering. She's over all 50 water treatment plants in the state of Utah. She says right here, we're learning about very resistant pathogens in water. They're very difficult to kill, so you need strong disinfectants. These chemicals may ultimately cause cancer over your lifetime. So the question becomes, would you rather have diarrhea today or cancer tomorrow? So who wants diarrhea and who wants cancer? Pretty good choice there, huh? That's the two choices we have, drinking tap water. How many cups of water are we supposed to drink today? Eight cups. This is eight cups boiled down. That's what you're drinking into your body every single day, eight cups of water. That's eight cups. That's one day. This is 30 days. This is 365 <coughs> days. And this is 10 years. How old are you? 45. 45. You've run 4.5 of those through your body. Okay? You can divide that out, every one of you. That's what your body has to deal with, drinking tap water. That's why when we put the light in tap water, it conducts electricity. There's 80,000 chemicals in our, in our water. In 1903, we had three people and 100 dying with cancer. In that hundred years till now, we've developed 80,000 commercially produced chemicals. And right now, one in four people die with cancer. And one in three people get cancer. And the cancer rate is still rising. And when you think about chemicals in our life, we wash our hair with chemicals, we brush our teeth with chemicals, we wash our clothes with chemicals, we have chemicals on our food. We're a chemical society. The only thing that takes that out of our body is the water we drink. Right here in the laboratory, let's take distilled water through the same journey the tap water's been on and make the light go on it. We'll have to add a lot of things to it. First thing we'll add to it is bacteria and virus and parasites. I'll wash my hands in. Five parts per million will make this light go on. And we'll see just how dirty my hands are. Pretty clean hands, huh? The tap water's still hundreds of times filthier than the distilled water. But you know the real funny thing about it is, though, 
You don't want to drink this water now, will you? No. Why not? Because it has fewer. Yeah, but it's still hundreds of times cleaner than tap water. Did you see what your eyes just did to your brain now? You saw something in your water. What do you really want in your water? Nothing. Me too. That, when I saw this the first time, that's what I decided. I didn't want anything in my water. I wanted clean water. But we can take it a little bit further and, and make the light go on. This is uh, some of the inorganic minerals we get out of our distiller. We'll put some of that in there. We'll put some chemical from farms and factories in there. And we'll stir that around. So that's starting to look like now. Mountain Dew, right? That's what you're just thinking. <laughs> now we'll take it to the water treatment plant where we'll add a little bit of technology to it. And we'll stir that around and we'll aerate it a little bit, just like even Minsky's talking about there. Add a little technology to the water. The right amount of chemicals we can make that awful looking water look just like tap water. Isn't that cool? Now let's see if we made it tap water. Yep. Now, according to Ivan Minsky, that's safe water to drink. You all want to drink it now? Why not? It's safe. What's the definition of safe water? Won't cause diarrhea today. Let's see what we've done here with the TDS meter. This TDS stands for Total Dissolved Solids. That means anything that's totally dissolved in the water will show up with the TDS meter. Now Ron wants you to read this for me and tell me what parts per million that says. Zero. Zero, zero, zero parts per million. Now tap water, right from this Ogden City here, let's see what that's saying. 296, 308 now, 308, 308 parts per million. Now this water that Teresa wouldn't drink, let's see what that was. After I threw all that, that filth in there, 56, 54, 54, it's still what, six times cleaner than tap water. Can you imagine how much filth is in tap water? If you could see where that tap water's been, for all the carcasses of the animals, the dead insects, the inorganic minerals, the chemicals that's in this water. If you could see what was in that water that's making 296 parts per million, you'd never drink it. You'd never ever drink it. And you shouldn't. 